Professor Banerjee enjoy, I think, his time in uh, this city. Uh, we are now moved to a new building, and uh, uh, this uh, move was in fall uh, 2021. We are uh, located on CNRS campus, which is uh, the National Research Center. And uh, we are uh, about 700 people in this building, as you can see, with two institutes. One institute is called Institute Charles Gard in Montpellier which is composed of five departments, 250 uh, research scientists, 200 PhD students and postdocs. Are you okay? Mute. Is it okay? Mute, mute. Three. From the molecule to material. So we have uh, uh, a couple of uh, different uh, topics ranging from molecular chemistry to macromolecular and supramolecular chemistry, self-organization, nanostructuration, hybrid nanomaterial, and of course we work on advanced material, and today I'm going to speak about uh, throw polymers and which kind of application we can have on this uh, material. And uh, another uh, group is, uh, another department is making some modeling with ab initio calculation and all of the stuff. So Ian, uh, in our department, we are working on uh, different methodology, and uh, one is uh, uh, traditionally uh, developed on telomerization, and I will dedicate a, a one-hour lecture on telomerization, which means low molecular weight, but very well functionalized material. We work also on conventional and control radical polymerization, RGRP, there will be also a lecture on this, we work on heterochemistry, phosphorus, silicon, and furin, and of course, uh, lectures on furin will be given. And uh, we have also been involved in uh, coupling two atoms, uh, just like to make some fluoropolymers containing phosphorus or some fluorosilicons, etc. We also work on accepted donor copolymerization, aqueous process of polymerization, cross-linking of copolymers, and as uh, also we as we are involved with uh, many. Uh, in partnership with industry, we have to work on applications. And uh, we have been working on fused cell membranes, lithium ion batteries, piezoelectric polymers, and others. And another group in uh, our department is working on biosource polymers, make uh, polymers containing uh, lipids, cardanol, ketosan, vanillin. And I know in India, India is the second largest producer in the world of cardanol. But I don't work in biosource polymers because I have so much activity in uh, flow polymers. So the content of my lectures uh, regarding uh, today, Monday, and uh, Tuesday will be uh, first a general introduction to fluorine chemistry and flow polymers. The second one next will be uh, what are flow polymers and why are they so special? The uh, last talk of today would be on radical copolymerization of free nitrogen monomers and fluoralkenes, and also the synthesis of new monomers and how we can uh, design some monomers in order to have some specific properties for typical applications. On Monday, I will give lectures on free nitrogen block and graft copolymers, as well giving some example of control of macromolecular architectures by control radical polymerization. And on Tuesday, I will also give some lectures on the design of renated telomers and the application as well architectured through polymers. Also, uh, a critical point is on the position of perfluoro or polyfluoroalkyl substances and recycling of fluoro polymers. And I will complete the series of lecture about synthesis and properties of flow polymers for specific application devoted to energy. Okay, so um, I am very pleased to uh, to give this series of lecture and thank you again, uh, Sanjeev, for uh, inviting me to uh, to this. So today I'm going to talk about uh, fluorine, and uh, I give you an introduction about uh, why fluorine is so interesting, because this is the, one of the lastest halogen gas uh, uh, just on the periodic classification. It's located on above chlorine, in, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it was named in 1812 by the French scientist André Ampère. So we are very proud of that. And it was the free molecule F2 was discovered by Moissan 
in 1886, I'll come back later. This is the most reactive electronegative element. It's, of course, very dangerous as a yellow greenish gas. Uh, it's the lightest gas existing as a fluorine, F2. HF also is highly dangerous and corrosive chemical. You know, uh, HF is, if you burn HF on your skin, you might have a, a reaction with uh, the calcium of the bone. And in this case, you can have a stone, which can be fatal in certain circumstances. The uh, antidote for HF is uh, sodium gluconate. Uh, there are special measures required to handle and transport free. NHF starting material uh, for uh, the most chemical product, product manufacturers. I will give you uh, a flavor on, on this. So the mother nature is weak in uh, having some CF bonds and there are some plants and indeed you can find from fluospar, which is calcium fluoride, which is the uh, 13th element on earth. And I will show you that there are many reserves of fluospar on the crest of the earth. Some plants have uh, some organohalogen compounds and uh, naturally occurring organofluorine compounds uh, uh, containing CF bond, which is very stable. Uh, but these plants are very rare and uh, only 13 examples has been found. These are a few uh, organic compounds you can have. Fluoroacetate is very dangerous. This can be on plants and many animals died because uh, they eat the leaves of a special plant containing this fluoroacetate. You have also fluoroacetone, uh, fluorocitrate, uh, containing also in, uh, containing in several plants. You have omega fluoric uh, acids also. Uh, some uh, um, fluorofuranine uh, and uh, nucleosidine compound derivatives. So you can see that there are not so many uh, natural compounds containing fluorine atoms. I told you about the reserves and uh, uh, this uh, chart represents uh, the different reserves. And uh, one of the most important is in Mexico you can see 68 million of tons, then in China, 49, then in South Africa, 41, then you have in Mongolia, in Spain, Iran, Vietnam, USA, and the rest of the world has 55 million tons. You can imagine that even uh, not all the space of Earth has been explored. And of course, calcium fluoride is a cheap material, in contrast to petrol or other platinum or other metals. But these are many, many huge reserves of uh, uh, calcium fluoride. And indeed, the world production of fluorospar is huge. And China is leading the market with about 70% uh, uh, with uh, five, more than 5,000 uh, of calcium fluoride in order to make some uh, the fluorine chemistry. Then the uh, South Africa, Mongolia, Mexico, and other uh, uh, countries that you can see on this chart. So this means that there are still a lot of exploitation, a lot of uh, production of uh, calcium fluoride, showing that the fluorine chemistry is still very alive. Uh, and uh, um, I, I'm, I'm glad to, to let you know that I was attending a conference on there were many mining uh, uh, companies, and uh, this is uh, some good prospect of the free industry. So um, usually, uh, when you add some uh, <coughs> hydrogen sulfuric uh, acid onto calcium fluoride, you are generating some uh, HF. And uh, indeed, HF, uh, the acid spar, uh, start to make some free inhalation of derivatives in order to have some fluorocarbons. And from fluorocarbons, of course, you can go to a lot of chemicals, hydrogen or fluorocarbon. There were in the past some uh, CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. But from that, from these intermediates, you can prepare even further chemicals, which leads to monomers. And then you can have some polymers. <clears throat> I've written Teflon on the right, but you have you can imagine 
Many Teflon is a well-known uh, compound, but you have Neoflon according to the company. I will come back later in my series of talk. So you can see that it's a huge uh, area and uh, uh, this is only, the, let's say, the emerged part of the iceberg showing uh, the different strategy starting from fluoride to fluoride spark. Okay. So depending on the quality, the quality in Mexico is very good. In China, you vary some uh, arsenic. In South Africa, also the quality is very good. So this uh, FERPA beneficiation process is calcium fluoride is very cheap. I mentioned that uh, less than 10 uh, cents uh, uh, a kilo. While when you make some HF, uh, the price uh, is multiplied by 10, and then the free chemical chemistry starts to have some higher price, and of course, the free chemical products are uh, multiplied by uh, almost 300 in this case. So you can imagine that the free chemistry is very expensive, but still very active, and I know in India, SFR, uh, is uh, producing a lot of chemicals. You have a couple of companies. You have Solvay also uh, near Mumbai uh, uh, making, and in um, also in uh, uh, Chennai, there is another uh, company. Uh, I have forgotten the name, but uh, uh, still in India, India is very active in the top uh, foreign chemistry. Why fluorine? Because fluorine uh, molecule atoms has the small it's a small atomic van der Waals radii. It's a little bit higher, bigger than that of hydrogen. Hydrogen variety is 1.20 angstrom, and fluorine is 1.57, which is lower than the radii of chlorine, 1.7. And it's very electronegative element. This is the most element, electronegative element. And these characteristics confirm that the CF bond is very short and very stable. And if you look at the, this diagram, you can see that the CF bond is short and has a high bond dissociation energy, which means the energy you need to put in order to break the CF, uh, the, the, the two atoms. So this is one of the highest. And this is very important because the material which I'm prepared from uh, fluorine are very high thermostable especially PTFE, which is one of the higher, most uh, thermostable uh, fluor compound. So the fluorine effect also has uh, some influence on the biological activity. It enhances metabolic stability, modulates physical chemical properties, just like the lipophilicity, the acidity, basicity, and lipophilicity is very important because uh, if you have to you, uh, to absorb on a body some uh, specific uh, biomolecules containing fluorine, it had to be lipophilic. And the presence of a CF3 or fluorine atom induces an enhance of the lipophilicity. Fluorine also increases binding affinity to target proteins. I'm not an expert in this area, but I know that Beate Koch in Germany has been doing a lot of free native proteins and which very specific application for health. And also free interferes with enzyme action. So you see that free has a lot of consequences, good consequences for uh, biology and medicine. So I mentioned that Moissan discovered fluorine at uh, free molecule F2 in 1886. And this uh, feature, uh, you know, the boiling point is very small, low, the feature uh, enabled him to get the Nobel Prize in, uh, at the early uh, 20th century. And uh, Linus Pauling mentioned that the fluorine is a super halogen. It's a class by itself. And when you look at the fluorine chemistry, it's very diverse with a lot of people involved in organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, biomedicine, tomography, material science, energy, and indeed, there are so many uh, varieties of topics developed in the free chemistry that even my lectures are not enough to uh, uh, encompass all this activity. 
So some history also. I think it's very interesting the history of science and uh, uh, CHF, uh, CH3F was discovered by Dumas and Perigro, French chemist, benzoyl fluoride in 1863 by Borodin, uh, parafluorobenzoic acid in 1877 by Lenz, uh, who German guy. Uh, the German chemistry, foreign chemistry is very strong also. Frobenzene at the uh, late uh, 19th century by Paterno and Oliveri, CFO in 1926 by Lobo and Damiens, and also uh, Simons make the, what is called the electrochemical free nation to change CNH to, to N plus 1 into CNF to N plus 1. So this was already a, a big breakthrough. Uh, this process called the Simon process has been scaled up by the 3M company in the US in Minnesota. And lots of aryl and aliphatic fluorides by late 1930, and, but there were very few perfluor compounds. And this process by electrochemical free nation really led to a mini revolution in the field of uh, science and chemistry. So for instance, this chart represents uh, some uh, already uh, in the uh, 1947 uh, journal regarding industrial engineering chemistry and showing that uh, at this time, uh, there were uh, a special journal. You know, at this time, there were not so many news uh, journals, okay? Like now with uh, JAX and Angevent and macromolecules and GeoChem. But this was one of the first journals which published in 1947 some information on foreign chemistry. So can you realize that? <laughs> it was very amazing for me. Um, I was not born, of course, at this time, but already the, uh, the chemistry, and if it was published in this journal, this is an American journal, this means that there was a, a, a bright future for that. So uh, just few information related to the uh, bond dissociation. So furin furin has a very weak bond, 38 kilo, uh, kilocal per mole, while the CH3F is very strong. And even CF4, the CF in CF4 is very, very strong. So you can imagine the influence of a furin uh, and, uh, in these uh, molecules and even just imagine with a PTFE, uh, polytetrafluorethylene, just like we say Teflon, which is a uh, DuPont uh, train mark, but it's very, very stable. I will come back later on that. So just uh, um, this uh, development was very important and uh, Enrico Fermi and even Einstein were very occupied with the Manhattan Project. A Manhattan Project, unfortunately, was a dramatic project to invent the atomic bomb. Uh, especially uh, with Teflon and UFCs, but still there are many activities there uh, regarding the uh, preparation of UF6 for nuclear plant. You have in India, we have in France a lot of nuclear plants, and there is an enrichment uh, from UF4 to uh, UF6 by free. Just to uh, show you some books, uh, there is a handbook of first chemistry by Gladys and Curran. There is, there are other, uh, we have to think that, uh, unfortunately, Iftan passed away uh, this year. Uh, Daniel bonnet Delpont and Jean-Pierre Beguet also published a nice book on bioorganic and medical, uh, medicinal chemistry of fluorine. Veronique Gouverneur in Oxford and Klaus Müller published also a book on uh, pharmaceuticals and medical medicinal chemistry uh, in 2012 and um, I have a privilege to publish a couple of books. This is a fascinating fluoropolymus uh, we published with uh, Russian uh, colleagues after uh, a conference in uh, 2019 in uh, New Moscow. So uh, this is a non-exhaustive book, of course, and uh, uh, I will give you many references and also reviews. I had a privilege to publish, to co-publish with uh, Professor Banerjee some very interesting uh, reviews in progress in polymer science, and I recommend you to, to read them. So the Manhattan Project was uh, dedicated to uh, preparation of UF6. Just to mention, 
this uh, uh, difference between a, a hydrocarbon molecule, just like hexane, and a perforin molecule, just like perfluorohexane. Your molecular weight are totally different, you know. And the density also, because when you have a fluorin compound, uh, fluorine atoms, you are going to increase the density. But amazingly, there is no interfacial uh, strength between the fluorine fluorine, so you have a high volatility. So be careful in the lab, if you have to work on low molecular weight uh, fluorinated compounds, in ro evaporator, rotative evaporator, you can lose your compound because it evaporates. So the HF demand is very important. As I mentioned before, from fluorspar to HF, you just have uh, to add sulfuric acid. And indeed, there is a lot of, I, I took this uh, chart from a recent conference I attended. And uh, indeed, as you can see, more than half of the use of HF is for uh, the production of fluorocarbons. We'll come back, of course, later. Also uh, on semiconductors and electronic gases, of course, for salt of lithium ion batteries and for uranium fuel production. And the other one is uh, some inorganic, some uh, uh, different compounds, uh, of course, HFCs, etc. HFCs be, being the, the starting point of uh, the fluorine chemistry. So this is very interesting because uh, uh, the, these figures are very uh, recent, okay? And uh, uh, you can see that uh, the demand, of course, of uh, HF is very important in order to promote the, uh, all the chemistry chain uh, in order to prepare some flow products. I mentioned that uh, a lot of features for uh, biomedicine, but also in uh, modern crop protection and uh, free native agrochemicals are very important also. More than 20% of all agrochemicals, even more, it's more than 30% now, uh, are uh, re linked to herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, growth regulators, uh, rodenticides. And uh, Shibata uh, Sensei, professor in uh, Nagoya, Japan, published a very nice paper on ACS Omega regarding the structure of more than 250 molecules which are active for uh, crop protection. And uh, also, uh, he, the same author published a very nice paper, eScience, uh, three years ago, regarding the evolution of uh, non agrochemical non fluorinated compounds for agrochemistry and fluorinated compounds for agrochemistry. So you can see that the green one uh, are uh, in this uh, chart, the green are dedicated to fluorochemicals. And it, uh, there is a, a big evolution, especially in the recent years, in which most of efficient uh, fluorochemicals uh, are uh, more agrochemicals contain fluorine which is a very interesting, because again, uh, the fluorine has specific properties, just like this uh, uh, hydrophobicity in order to protect the plants when it's raining, so the plant, the, the chemicals do not, uh, is not destroyed by water, etc. Et um, today, there are more than 600,000 products containing at least one fluorine atom. This is a huge, Okay, of course, uh, this has been uh, from uh, discovered in uh, labs, uh, academic labs, but also the, the scaling up has been prepared by companies and Lipitor has been produced. You have only one fluorine, but the presence of this fluorine changed dramatically the uh, properties. Also, I, show back, I, I will come back to this uh, little mouse, which is breathing in a perfluoro uh, compound because the perforinated compound are uh, carrying oxygen. And so uh, it was not suffocating. Of course, uh, Gore-Tex uh, coating, uh, protection, waterproof protection also. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, little uh, figure scheme represents a lithium ion battery, it's a battery. You have also, of course, repellent to oil, Hello, to water, and a membrane has been also prepared. So this will be uh, illustrated. A lot of pieces for connection 
elbows in chemical engineering for stable liners in order to carry uh, corrosive gas. So just imagine when uh, uh, the oil extraction from the soil has to be uh, taken off, you need a, a specific liner which is not able to dissolve in oil. And these fluoropolymers are used, okay? And many for electronics, car industry, your mobile phone, battery in your mobile phone, in your cell phone, uh, etc., etc. So, uh, and medical. A lot of applications from the calcium fluoride to uh, the uh, um, specific uh, advantage. Just a brief information synthesis of fluorocarbons. So I mentioned that uh, very often there is the swatch, uh, swap products uh, was uh, prepared hydrocarbon, which is chlorinated in order to give carbon, and then this chlorocarbon can undergo this antimony uh, trichro compound or uh, over by free nation HF or with F2 it's possible to prepare some fluorocarbons. So there are many different uh, um, reactants uh, for uh, Yamamoto, also uh, derivative, Umemoto, sorry, derivative to prepare some free nation and still many strategies. Because if, I hope that I convince you that the presence of a free atom or CF3 enable to change the efficiency, to enhance the efficiency, uh, regarding the, the bio or the uh, crop. Uh, uh, so the free nation is very, very important. So the Freon, Freon is a trademark from DuPont. This was Halon also, or uh, Solcane, or uh, Fulgen, depends on the company. But Freon at the beginning were chlorofluorocarbon. And uh, uh, already uh, Thomas Bitley in the Frigidaire Corporation, okay, in uh, 1928, found these free native compounds with uh, a very high volatility were very efficient in order to be used for uh, this uh, Frigidaire. So um, we say in French, we say Frigidaire, okay, this is a French name, uh, but uh, the freezer uh, has been used and uh, this company led to the name of uh, Popular. Okay, so there was a, a, a free nation made with uh, uh, antimony trifluoride or with a catalyst pentafluoride antimony, changing CCL4 into CF2CL2, which is called the Freon 1 2. Okay, this is a non toxic, non flammable, and energy efficient refrigerant. However, at this time, people ignore that there was this issue with uh, ozone layer, and uh, CFC has been banned for that. So the chlorocarbon uh, uh, series of different organic compounds containing carbon, fluorine, and chlorine, okay, CFC. Uh, but now the regulation has uh, banned all the CFCs. Uh, however, if a CFC is used and transformed 100% into a, a chemical, I will come back later, it can be still used. This is why some uh, uh, CFT22 has been used for uh, making some uh, tetrafluorophylline and then PTFE. So uh, a lot of aerosol spray, propellant, solvent, and flammable agents uh, are were made of CFCs at this time. But because of the ozone uh, depression potential and the global warming potential, higher than CO2. They, uh, the overall uh, situation in uh, Europe, USA, Europe is rich, USA is uh, EPA, change. So essential for refrigeration, of course, the chemical stability, safety consideration, non-flammable, non-toxic, and environmentally benign, and of course, for thermodynamic uh, properties, very important. Uh, so the problem of uh, these CFCs is the chlorine. The chlorine radicals are very uh, extremely reactive with ozone. And uh, usually when the CF2Cl2 goes to the stratosphere with the UV light, it decomposes into two radicals, CF2Cl radicals and Cl radical. And this chlorine radical reacts with ozone in order to make the ClO radical and oxygen. And unfortunately, 
the presence of, so you can understand that this CLO plus O3 again consume. So one uh, radical of chlorine consumes two molecules of uh, ozone, making, of course, this problem. And Molina and Roland published a very nice uh, paper in the 70s and got the Nobel Prize a couple of years later. So making a lot of global warming uh, preoccupation with uh, 1987, the Montreal Protocol. Then in 1990, there was the Clean uh, Air Act amendments and of course the Kyoto Protocol in 1997. And still there are a lot of uh, regulation have been amended to these uh, different uh, protocols. Regarding the ozone layer, as you can see in uh, 1981, the, the ozone hole was uh, very small and uh, uh, 10 years later, uh, you can see that there was a huge increase of this uh, ozone hole. And this also shows the map of US and Canada showing that when you go north, north and north, up north, uh, near the pole, you have a, a higher concentration of uh, this uh, uh, hole. This, this is a Dobson unit. Okay, um, I read a lot of paper from uh, uh, Professor Hiseki in Japan because uh, he did a lot of things regarding ODP, which is ozone depletion potential, and GWP, which is the global warming potential. And uh, they show that uh, this chart is very interesting because it lists different compounds. I, I really apologize because, uh, you know, the, the community of people working with uh, HFCs or CFCs speak with uh, some uh, unit, digit 11, 12, 113, etc. And for instance, I give you an example in which X, Y, and Z represent X is the number of carbon, Y is the number of hydrogen minus one, and Z is the number of three. So this means that an example, if you consider F, or CFC 113, this means that you have one plus one is two carbon atom. One is uh, uh, the, the number of minus one is zero hydrogen, and three is the number of three. So this is the structure is C2, F3, Cl3, and indeed the structure is uh, CF, Cl2, CF2, Cl. This solvent is very interesting because it can dissolve a lot of fluoropolymers. So this is important for you to have an information why the, uh, now in the fridge you don't have CFCs, but you have HFC, in which they delete, the, uh, they have suppressed carbon, uh, chlorine, and uh, bromine. And as you can see on this chart, I apologize, I don't have uh, more recent uh, information. This is for HFC 134A, CF3, CH2F, the evolution of the different CFCs. So you see after the 70s, when they discovered there was the uh, ozone depletion, ozone hole, of course, there was still an increase because people were still using these CFCs. But from the uh, late 80s, there was a drastic uh, consumption of CFCs and uh, HFC started to grow and grow. So this is very interesting uh, because uh, uh, the uh, concern now we are very concerned about environment aspects. And uh, unfortunately for the free chemistry, it was not a good image for uh, the public opinion. Anesthetics also. So uh, diethylether, it, this is the structure both, and there were uh, different compounds, or just or froxane, or halothane, or isofluorane, or sevofluorane, or desfluorane. So all of them are anesthetics for surgery and uh, has been used so they are safe. And uh, uh, but still, still use some of them are still used and discovered, of course, on that. First isolation of bacterial fluorinated enzymes. So this was a nice work of Dave O'Hagan uh, in uh, St. Andrew in Scotland, starting from uh, using uh, uh, FDA synthesized 
to make L-methionine. And indeed, they produce this kind of enzyme, uh, and the furinase was used in order to uh, change this uh, molecule into uh, this one. Medicinal chemistry, uh, there are uh, about 130 furinated compounds uh, with uh, US trade names, according to the World Drug Index. So anti-cancer agents, antiviral agents, anti-inflammatory agents, anti-hypertensive agents, anti-fertility drugs, central nervous system drugs. So there are still many, many uh, uh, chemicals uh, with uh, specific uh, application in medical medicinal chemistry. Of course, I'm, going, I'm not going to, to give you in details on that because my uh, lectures will be uh, devoted to uh, fluoropolymers, but it's interesting for you to know that because uh, for, especially for students, the future uh, can be found into uh, bio uh, medical uh, pl plants. So these uh, biologically active fluorochemicals, uh, the pioneer work, uh, 1953, with only one fluorine. So of course you have to uh, consider the stereochemistry of that. And uh, if this uh, is in the back of the plan of the molecule, maybe that which is on the top is not efficient. So uh, of course, I, I'm not going to go today in this uh, concern of stereochemistry, but uh, as you know, you can have a, a, a very efficient uh, uh, influence according to R or S. Anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, dexamethasone uh, has a very potent uh, anti-arthritic drug, and of course, uh, uracil, and this 5 uracil uh, developed by the Tozo company in Japan is very efficient for ophthalmology especially for drops in the eyes. So uh, this chart uh, was uh, from uh, the Orient Governor in Oxford, uh, who published uh, a nice review, Cancer Crave, 2008, showing Libitor again. I mentioned that in a few slides ago. And uh, you can see different molecules. Uh, you see this uracil for uracil. You have different uh, intermediate with, with Talo compound and uh, uh, you either CF3 or uh, furin or C2F5 can change dramatically the properties. So Lipitor, Prozac, which is antidepressor, uh, Celebrex for anti arthrosis. So you have different chemicals uh, with uh, aromatics compounds, especially and anesthetic, as I mentioned before. Uh, this example is uh, uh, regarding the inhibitor for platelet aggregation, okay? With, uh, this has a half-life of 10 minutes, and if you put two furin or on this position, okay, uh, you are going to increase the half-life of 90 days. So this shows that, again, because of the stability of the furin atoms, you, uh, you can increase uh, dramatically the, the performance uh, indeed, in this stage, it's uh, uh, lasting the stability in that. So this was developed by Fried in 1980. Another point is very important is the positron emission tomography. Uh, this is a non-invasive diagnostic scanning technique. And indeed, you have to absorb a lot of liquid containing a, a radioactive element, F18. And F18, the molecule charged uh, with this F labeled with F18, the li lifetime is only 110 minutes. So this means that usually the synthesis occurs very fast, not very far from the, the place where the tomography is carried out, and it's injected in order to see how the, this the tracer is going to go to the uh, cancerous uh, cells. And uh, 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 Professor Yamaguchi in Nagoya University has been very uh, interested in making uh, these uh, new molecules, as well as some colleagues in France, in Lyon, uh, Didier Lebars or Thierry Billard, has done a lot of uh, chemistry with that. So I show you the, the little mouse in the in the beaker full of uh, free compound. You know this is a perfluorinated compound, 
on the top of which there is a fish. And indeed, this is water. So the fish is alive. And as you know, as I mentioned before, the free chemicals are, have high density. And so this is an evidence they are more dense than water. And the mouse uh, is still breathing in this uh, perforal uh, carbon. So you can have this perforal uh, THF or this uh, perforal decaline, which has been used for uh, blood substitutes. They went very fast in the blood substitutes because they, they realized that uh, uh, they were uh, uh, at a different stage. Stage one, you know that you have different stages to test uh, on the, the mouse and then on dogs and uh, chimpanzee and then on uh, human being. But unfortunately, the product was not uh, commercialized. It's a pity of that. And but, uh, after the perforation, carbon emulsion, the eye of a little mouse unfortunately turned blind. She was blind and unfortunately she died several days uh, later. But this shows that there was a possibility to find out some uh, substitute, perforinity substitute for artificial bloods. But the, the strategy uh, unfortunately stopped uh, after some discoveries. You know, they, they started in uh, 1966 already. So these are some technologies regarding the different chemicals and the market sectors. So I, I'm not going to, to, to read all of them, but uh, this will be given in many examples uh, during the other uh, presentations. But just to mention that there are many technologies using free compounds. Whatever uh, you uh, energy, this is cation exchange or complex anion formation, elemental free nation, uh, or uh, perforination organic compounds. Here you can see that you can use different intermediates or different compounds in order to really uh, high temperature conversion with tetrafluorethane in order to prepare some uh, market. So the markets are, I mentioned, agriculture, uh, batteries, medicine, electronics, aluminum, nuclear, refrigerants, you remember with HFCs, polymers, pharmaceutical, compounds, solvent, electrical, foam blowing, oil refining, pharmaceuticals, automobiles, agriculture again, fibers and fluoropolymers. So you can see that, uh, um, as I mentioned, many activities are uh, driven by the free chemistry. And uh, we need uh, researchers, of course, academic researchers, industrial researchers, and also uh, having some uh, now some chemicals uh, produced in the labs will be on the market in 10 or 15 years. So uh, uh, we can wait uh, still uh, unexpected discoveries coming soon for future products. Hydrocarbon versus fluorocarbons. Uh, if you look at the, the, the white part is a hydrocarbon compound in which you have only carbon and hydrogen. The carbon is symbolized by the black part, while the uh, white balls are hydrogen. So you can see that it's rather linear, it's very well organized, and of course there is a crystallization. This can be, for instance, polyethylene, in which you have this uh, good organization. And of course, this nice organization induces crystallization. But on the perforated one, where the green ball, green is the color of ruin, represents the ruin atom, you have a pitch which is different. So there is this helicoidal structure, which is totally different because, as I mentioned before, the size of the ruin atom is a little bit bigger than the size of a hydrogen atom. And this induces some specific uh, helicoidal structure Holdo making some crystallization. And as you know, PTFE is a crystalline material. The melting point is 327 Celsius. And because this is generated by the nice organization of a structure. Uh, so they, I, I like that because uh, uh, Eric Banks from uh, UMIST, the University of Manchester, um, Eric Banks was very active in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 
published many, many papers in Tatlou also. Tatlou was editor of a journal for chemistry. And uh, they mentioned a, a lot of good citation regarding the excellent protection from chemical attack and also mentioning that fluorocarbon have heart of diamond and the skin of rhino. So I like this uh, citation showing how fluorine is very important and how fluorochemicals are uh, very specific with uh, this kind of uh, chemical inertness and uh, thermal stability. Now let's go to polymers. And uh, um, I, I assume that most of you are, have a good knowledge on polymers. And as you know, you have some commodity polymers, which are uh, polystyrene, polypropylene, polyphylene. But also you have, let's say, mid-range, poor performance of uh, polymers, uh, polypropylene oxide, ABS, acrylic nitrate, butylene, styrene, polycarbonate, PMMA. Uh, polyethylene terephthalate, which is very interesting for plastic bottles who can be recycled, polyamide 6 or 6,6, 6, and uh, also polyethylene ultra high molecular weight. So these are, let's say, uh, not commodity material, but uh, the performance is still poor. In contrast, of course, on the top of the pyramid of a triangle, you have a high performance polymers, and of course, they are less produced than the other polymers. Uh, why less is a good question, because uh, uh, the demand, of course, has to follow the, the production. And uh, as there is still a high increase of uh, production of plastic, especially commodity polymers, there is uh, still a slow increase, but still an increase of high performance polymers. And you can see here some uh, PVDF, polyvalent fluoride, Fluoro polymers, PEA, some uh, uh, polyetherimides, polysulfone, poly, uh, propylene, uh, um, polyethylene sulfide, and also PTFE. So, uh, fluorinated polymers are on the top of the pyramid and are regarded as, uh, of course, niche polymers, but with high performances. And one, of course, one of the uh, first uh, fluoropolymer discovered was PTFE, polytetrafluorophylline. It was called Teflon by the DuPont company. And this picture represents Plunkett and, his, and uh, part of his group who uh, decided to use CFC-22. So it was in uh, 1938, okay? And to heat it up at 600 in order to prepare some difrocarbenes, these difrocarbenes are not stable, but they dimerize into tetrafluoroethylene. And uh, because this is a gas which boils at uh, minus 75 degrees, and uh, so they, they did the, that on the first day, so they store the TFE in a container, and when they decided to use it in order to make some organic chemistry, they discovered that there was no gas escaping from the container. Fortunately, they tar the container, and they show that they, this was the same amount, and discovered, because there was no pressure, decided to sew the container, and they discovered a white powder, which was insoluble in all solvent, which was highly thermostable. And this was the discovery of PTFE or Teflon. So Plunkett in 1938 discovered, let's say, one of the first fluoropolymers. The, indeed, the first one was discovered one or two years before in a German company, but it was not as popular as PTFE. It was PCTFE, polychlorotrifluoroethylene. Uh, I will come back later. So these are the main uh, monomers. And uh, as you can see, vanillin fluoride, boiling point minus 84. So all the three native monomers are gas. TFE minus 76, vanillin fluoride minus 72, hexafluoropropane HFP minus 30, CTFE, this is I mentioned the polymer of CTFE, chlorotrifluorophylline, sorry, there is a mistake here, is CTFE. Boils at like minus 28. Then you have PMVE, perfluoromethyl vinyl ether, trifluoropropene, 
and bromotriphroethylin. So all of them are gas. And so to make some reactions, you need to do some autoclaves polymerization. So uh, these are commercially available. So many companies are producing them because they manufacture the polymer or the copolymer. I will give you some examples. On Keep in mind the starting point of uh, the uh, fluorine chemistry starts from, of course, from monomers. These are all these contain a double bond. And uh, you have also some hexafluoropropylene oxide, which can be polymerized and an ionic polymerization with a fluoride anion. You have also oxetane, which is a cyclic compound, which can be polymerized, and also vinyl ethers. Uh, uh, containing a fluorine, let's say the double bond is hydrocarbon and uh, you have oxygen and fluorine one, this is possible, but usually the polymerization in the, the uh, cationic polymerization. All these eight monomers can be polymerized or copolymerized under radical conditions. This is something you have to keep in mind. It's very difficult to make an ionic polymerization or cationic polymerization of this because they are electrohydrine monomers, so you cannot do any cationic polymerization. Eventually, you can do some anionic, but all the industries trying to make some anionic polymerization of this thing. Something important is if VDF, TFE, vinyl fluoride, trifluoropropyl, or CTFE homopolymerize, unfortunately, HFP, hexafluoropropylene, or uh, perfluoromethyl vinyl ether do not homopolymerize. This is also very important, but they can copolymerize with EDF or with TFE. I will later, I will explain you better. So the raw material, I mentioned the HFC22. You remember, this was the work uh, carried out by Plunkett at 600 Celsius. Of course, you need a lot of energy to break the bond, making some... Uh, uh, Difrocarbin, which dimerize into uh, TFE to make some P PTFE. Of course, some copolymers, TFE HFP, which is FEP, and also fluoroelastomers. I will go later uh, today on the next talk on the uh, free and elastomers. But also, you have chlorodifluoroethane, and you can recognize here by dehydrochlorination. The presence of CF2 double bond CH2, which is vanillin fluoride, which is uh, VDF. So from that, of course, it's possible to uh, make a dehydrochlorination to have VDF. This is the industrial process. And then to polymerize VDF to make PVDF or to copolymerize VDF with HFP to make some copolymers or even terpolymers, where you have three monomers. What about the situation? This is a recent uh, uh, chart regarding the production of uh, top uh, four, let's say, uh, polymers. First is uh, PTFE is the most produced with uh, 45%. It was more than 50%, let's say, three or four years ago. But PVDF, with a great advent of uh, lithium-ion batteries as a binder, has been growing in production. And some, uh, 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 let's say, speculators plan that the production of PVDF will be higher than that of PTFE in uh, maybe 10 years. So PTFE is the highest, PVDF is the second one, FEP, which is a copolymer of TFE and HFP, called fluorinated ethylene propylene. And then you have all of us, especially PCTFE, ETFE, ethylene, TFE, copolymers, etc. So this was a recent uh, conference I attended last, uh, last month. And as you can see, the production, uh, the P PVDF consumption by, by country, uh, United States, uh, a few, quite a few, but is in the, uh, China developed a lot of PVDF, Western Europe also, because of Arkema in Solve, okay? And in Japan, a few, because Korea company also has a, a secret to polymerize uh, VDF in different strategies from uh, Arkema and Solvi. So polymerization, you need autoclave. And this is what we have in the lab. 
So basically, uh, the, the figure on the left is a 600 milliliter, so it's equipped with a manometer, with valves, with a spinning band inside, and a heating mantle. So what happens is you need uh, uh, radicals, so the radicals are generated by a radical initiator, so you have to heat it up with a radical initiator to release the radical, and then after uh, initiation, propagation, recombination of macro radicals, you produce your polymer. Indeed, what happens is because you heat your autoclave to release the radical, the pressure is increasing because at the beginning, as I told you, the free nitrogen monomers are gas. But during the consumption, if you do a batch, obviously you will see a reduce of pressure. And in this case, you can monitor your reaction by the decrease of pressure. And when uh, Professor Banerjee was in a lab, he did a lot of reaction and intuitively, he was able to say, okay, this reaction works or this reaction does not. So this was very interesting because the manometer, a label to, to check about the success of your reaction. So we have uh, also uh, smaller autoclaves, uh, 100 milliliter or 50 milliliters. So of course it's uh, uh, monitored by uh, a controller in order to heat it up and to uh, change the speed of the autoclave. And after reaction, after releasing the unreacted gas, we open the autoclave. And in this case, so on the bottom right, you can see some uh, PVDF uh, reaction. And uh, it, it, this is very interesting because uh, you have uh, some uh, whitish uh, crystalline PVDF uh, and uh, as a container, this was a successful reaction. And then you have to clean up and to precipitate and coagulate and then to get your, your PVD. So um, this is a, a lab scale, okay? But uh, if you look at the industry, uh, the, of course, the implementation to produce. Yeah, yeah Bruno, we, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. This is Sanjit. Yes. So uh, yes. this lecture one uh, session, it will be over in five minutes. Okay. Then you get a breather for 10 minutes and the lecture yes. two session starts, okay? Okay, excellent. Okay. So just yeah, to mention, you. okay, you're welcome. This is a, a, a sketch of what you can find from industry. And, uh, and it's a job book. It's very interesting because he was working for DuPont and he could publish this uh, nice chart. Where you see this is a copolymerization of uh, HFP and on the top left and TFE to make FEP. So you have a lot of valves, you have a lot of connectors, you have a lot of systems, so loops. In order to, and purging, because TFE is very dangerous. Under high pressure and oxygen, you can have an explosion. And people mention that it's three times higher than TNT, the explosion. So you have to be very careful. And uh, starting from uh, 300 milliliter to several square meters or cubic meters, you have this kind of autoclave, which uh, this was, uh, 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 and I want to thank uh, Process Plant Equipment Corporation in South Africa who gave me this uh, this picture. So this is about uh, uh, 40 square meters, uh, cubic meters uh, autoclave. Uh, here, obviously you can understand that from lab scale to uh, production, there are a lot of uh, steps to overcome. So the polymerization of fluorolefin usually starts from with initiation. So you have a special fate which release some uh, radicals and the radicals can change into OH or not, in order to direct, uh, start the initiation on uh, the addition of radical onto uh, the olefin, then you have a propagation, and then you have the termination. And usually the termination occurs by recombination of radicals. You don't have disproportionation. So this chart represents the different system because you can do in aqueous process or in solution systems. In aqueous process, you will get a higher concentration of the monomer, so you have higher molecular weight. Indeed, just imagine that you need to figure out the uh, non-solubility of raw olefins in water. And usually, uh, uh, this is for environment is more friendly. Uh, they use per sulfate, which are uh, which are uh, water uh, soluble uh, initiators. You have lower molecular weight, higher degree of branching. Okay, 
and uh, higher rate of pressure, of course, because of the problem of solubility of uh, free energy gas in water, of course. And for uh, solution, you need a solvent, but it's uh, a, a problem. You are more linear polymer structure and uh, a better chain stability because uh, you can use some uh, uh, organic uh, initiator. We use, for instance, some CF3 free native initiator to have at the end a free energy group which enhance the thermal stability of the, of the compounds. Also, some supercritical conditions can be used and De Simone in the mid 90s started to publish a very nice science paper on that. So this is a scheme of a polymerization in emulsion in which you have a lot of surfactants in, uh, at the, and the polymerization occurs in the micelle. Okay, so this is uh, very interesting because uh, the growing is in the micelles and so the monomer are entering in micelles in order to grow, grow and grow uh, with uh, infinite uh, volume. So PTFE can have several million molecule weight. So the flow polymers, uh, some, uh, usually um, the world consumption of flow carbons, you have a lot for flow polymers, more than half, while the other are flow carbon. And the uh, major plastics are Teflon, Algoflon, Neoflon, this is PTFE. For flow elastomers, it's a Viton, it's a copolymer of VDF, NHFP or Calores, this is from DuPont, also Dial from uh, Daikin, cameras from DuPont, or frenated fluids, Crytox, Formblin and Demnon. These are perfluoropoly efforts produced usually by um, hexafluoropropylene oxide. So these are the application. Of course, I will go later on that. Uh, the frene uh, is essential for many applications linked to semiconductors, photovoltaic solar cells, and lithium ion batteries for photovoltaic, of course, the back sheet is very important because it has to be durable, stable to UV, and uh, uh, the salts and the separators. Okay, and the salts, of course, for uh, lithium batteries. So these are the main strategy. I will come back several times to this slide to show that fluoropolymers have a very high uh, outstanding properties, low affinity index for optical fibers, low surface energy for lubricant release, high all water and soil repellency for protection, different substrates, especially cookware application, high chemical thermal oxidative stability for protective coatings, very low surface tension for surfactants. These are, let's say, surfactants are low molecule weight polymers, okay? Low, less than 1,000. And there is also with a PFAS, I will come back later, there is a big uh, issues on that, especially for public opinion. For polymers are electrochemical stable, for lithium-ion batteries and proton exchange membrane, and also for insulation. So I think I'm going to stop here uh, uh, because uh, this is one hour. Is okay, Sanjeev, to stop? Yes, 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 yes. You stop here. Okay. You take a 10 okay. minutes break, and then 4.40 we start. Okay, excellent. So uh, I see you in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank yeah, yeah right. sure. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Okay, see you. Yeah, okay.